It's a whole bunch of cameras in here today. I'm gonna get in between you ladies so y'all can make me look good. All right, while they're sitting down, I'll go over a couple numbers. Uh, individually, Alicia Froling broke her own single season rebound mark. Uh, she had 328 last year, she has 330 this year. As a team, for the third straight season, SMU broke the single season blocks record. Um, they had 184 last year, 185 this year. Um, and we broke the single season rebound record in the last game, extended it to 1380. Uh, this year it was 1331 last season. Uh, with that, we'll let Coach Mays open it up with a statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. I'll tell you what, the first half made it look as if we was going to have a little fun, but they made it interesting in the second half, didn't they? Tell you what, this time of the year, if you have your team and they fight to the, to the final buzzer and you can come away with a victory, you have to be happy. It's all about surviving and advancing. And I'm so proud of our young ladies for continuing the fight. So we're moving on, so we're excited. You faced a, a team that came in off a win over Oklahoma State. What concerned you the most coming into tonight about Abilene Christian? Well, I, I told the team we were concerned mostly about their three-point uh, shooting ability. The fact that a team that shoots as many threes as a team and shoot as confident uh, at the three-point line, they're never out of the game. So we, don't, we can never get a lead that would be safe. And uh, I'm just fortunate that they miss as many as they missed because they was able to take, they took 36. I didn't expect them to take that many. How about you, Morgan? Well, it was on the scouting report. <laughs> they shot like 48 threes in the game. Exactly. What was said in that timeout, kind of through the fourth quarter as they started making that run? Well, I, I just wanted us to lock in. What was said was us to go back and play the way we were capable of playing. We was getting a little bit lax. We had started fouling. Uh, we were out of position. Uh, and I was just trying to get us back to refocus. And I wrote on the board, let's go back to our discipline. Our discipline on the defensive end is what's going to win this game for us. We still have to box out and rebound. And we were able to do enough to get the victory. For the players, this was a team that had come in putting up over 800 three-pointers this year. Did you guys defend on the perimeter any differently tonight than you normally do to force them to 6 to 36? Um, yes, we did. We we were expecting them to shoot, uh, drive, and kick. So we're going to close out hard and just depend on our help. We didn't want them to shoot the three. So it's hard closeouts. During warm-ups, a couple of you guys saw you look around, saw a lot of purple fans in the stands that came over from Abilene. What did you and your staff do to prepare your team for that much opponent's noise in your building? Well, I, I didn't come out, so I didn't see them. So. I just heard the young ladies come back in and tell me <laughs> they, they had a few things to say. It's quite a bit of purple out there among some other things. I said, okay, we got a little bit of motivation. We just need to go out there. And I was completely satisfied with the way we started the basketball game. I think we started on an 8 to a 9 0 run or something like that, whatever it was. And the only thing you can do at this point in the season is get your team prepared and have them ready to play. And I thought we were ready to play. I just would have liked us to finish the game a little bit better than we did. And I could tell a little bit there, you know, they made a little run there in the first half, but then your girl seemed, you know, one thing that's good enough talked about before the game is that you guys are playing on your home court, doesn't want you to be comfortable, but they were looking comfortable. You guys were looking comfortable. Yeah, and, and that's, I think, that's the area we've grown. We've grown uh, tremendous. We were nervous. Now we feel like we're going to protect home court. Uh, whether I don't care how many fans they have in here, we, we feel like the Moody Magic is something that we're starting to own and, and, and uh, make ours as a team. And, and I'm glad to see them play with a little bit more poise. I just, the poise is one thing I like to see them be a little bit more aggressive to finish teams. Uh, whether it's at the free throw line or just finishing with execution. And that's something we're going to continue to work on to the end of the season. And I would think, look, with a team that can shoot threes the way they can, that's why you don't want to give them, you know, crack the door open a little bit. They can Will you tell them? Tell them. Yeah. Tell them. You don't want, you don't want to crack. Did y'all hear that? You yeah. don't want to crack the door. You don't want to give them. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. In the previous round, you guys got behind Louisiana Tech and had to claw your way back, go to overtime, get the win that way. Tonight you came out with a much faster start. Anything different in your pregame speech or in the approach you guys took to get ready for tonight? 
Um, we knew that we came out slow against La Tech, but and we just made an adjustment as a team, more so to um, come out with high energy and be intense and play together. And we made that a point to do that together. See, they never share this stuff with me, though. I mean, I wish they would tell me that they're coming together and they're making these decisions so I can calm down and feel a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm on eggshells. <laughs> Morgan, will you share that with me, being the point guard? Next time y'all decide something, will y'all share that information with the coach? We say we got you all the time, coach. We got you, coach. That's what that means. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> David Thomas got hurt. Alicia Froling had some foul trouble. And you still won the rebound battle by 12. How? Um, we knew they were crashing five people, so we made it like a point to yeah. re to box out and then pursue the ball. Like they shoot a lot of three pointers, so us guards had to make sure the long we got the long rebounds. Um, so we helped the post out on that, and then the posts were doing their job boxing out and keeping the people on their back too. Why do you think they took as many threes as they did? You mentioned you didn't think they shoot that many. Well, it's their DNA. It's, it's what they've been doing all season. Uh, they're a team that they live and die on the, the dribble drive. And if you, I think we're a solid defensive team when it comes to teams trying to dribble drive and get to the paint. I think we protect the paint pretty well when we're not fouling, of course. And the thing is, they drive and kick. They live and die by the three ball. And tonight, fortunately, we had a hand and we were close enough to them to just get them out of rhythm just enough to where they did never felt comfortable shooting threes. Uh, it almost looked like they, they were struggling or pressing a little bit just to make one to try to build some confidence. But we continued to play defense well enough to keep them off balance. You gave up 16 points in the first half and 36 in the second. And obviously, they had to shoot threes. They were, they were behind. But they actually shot more in the first half. What was the difference on the defensive end or the difference in their offense that allowed them to be more effective in the second half? Well, the way that I look at that, I see we played a, a, a tale of two games. I think in the first half, we were more solid. We were more disciplined. Uh, our sense of urgency about everything we did, whether it's executing on offense or on the defensive end, in the second half, we didn't have that same sense of urgency. For whatever reason, we got a little bit complacent, and they gained their confidence, and that's what made it a little bit more of a struggle in the second half. We're used to sitting here with Alicia Froling with another double-double tonight. She scores seven points and only took four shots. What were they doing defensively that made her uh, not fill up the stat sheet like she normally does? See, as I watched it, I have to go back and watch the film. But what I saw, I didn't see them really do anything specific to take the ball away. I think we just played within the Florida offense. And, and if our team ever get to the point where they truly understand what happened tonight, the strength of our team is the team. And if the ball moves, Anybody and everybody can take the, take the shot. And uh, it just depends on the matchups. It didn't go Alicia's way, but she fought. She did everything on the rebounding end, and she helped, helped us get the win. We go to Patrick for the last question. Morgan, when you walked out there first and saw that purple, what was the first thing that went to your mind? Is this a bunch of opposing fans at your home? Uh, I knew we had to show out and um, start early, um, have a really great start because we didn't want their fans to get excited and out yell our fans. So that was our thoughts. Felt good to keep them quiet all game, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All righty. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.